Let's try some new paint. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Artists at Play, and today I have another review for you. Today I will be trying out the Zen Art Art Nomad Watercolor Travel System. I'm really excited about this. This has 24 half pans and seven tools in it, and it's a neat little travel palette. And I think it's got such a unique design. I was super excited to get it. And then I'm also going to be trying out some of their paper. It's 100% cotton. It's their 9 by 12. It comes with 20 sheets. It's 140 pounds. So I'm excited to try this paper as well. And yeah, I will be transparent with you and let you know that Zen Art did send me these supplies. However, this will be 100% my own opinions. As always, I will be just sharing my experiences with you as I go along. But I was pretty excited when they reached out to me because I have tried their black tulip brushes before and I loved them. And I had just bought some of those on a whim on Amazon one time and they were fantastic. So I'm excited to actually try out their watercolor paint. And I have been looking a little bit at the company since they've reached out to me. I've gone to their website and I have to say, I really like what the company seems to stand for. I wasn't very familiar with them before other than, you know, the watercolor brushes that I had tried, but it is an artist owned company and they seem to really care about their products and putting out products that are affordable that other artists will really enjoy. And I thought that that was a really good message on their website. So I'm going to link their website in the description below. Along with an article that I found on their site about how to choose watercolors, I think it's very helpful even if you're not buying their products. It's just a great helpful article for people who are new to watercolors. They talk about light fastness and pigment information and just like the basics and I thought that was really interesting. So their blog is really cool too because they have a lot of resources for artists on their website. So I'll link that in the description so you can learn more about them. So let's get down to this palette. This is part of their Virtuoso series. And it's their Artist Watercolor Series. And in it they have, it's considered one of their Allegro palettes. Um, <laughs> let me see if I can get it out. I don't want to tear this up too much. Look at this. Oh, it's super cool. Let me see. Okay, so there is some information down here. This is the founder of Zen Art Supplies, Ardek Casanova. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Beautiful. She is the reason we are here today, folks, <laughs> because obviously if it wasn't for her, there wouldn't be these cool art supplies. So I think that's really cool. I love businesses that are, like I love supporting other artists and I love it when artists come out with supplies for other artists. I just think it's a wonderful thing because I think that obviously no one understands the way an artist will understand, you know? And so I think it's really neat. And then obviously they have their satisfaction guaranteed. They have a warranty. Okay. Zen Art Supplies Unique Watercolor Travel System. This is their Virtuoso series. So this is giving us our pigment information and it's also giving us our light fast information. And down here it has a key that lets us know what the light fastness means, the transparency. So it has all the typical information. Now, I am not somebody who is familiar with specific pigments. Like I'm getting familiar with specific pigments, but I'm not someone who can swatch a color yellow and know exactly what pigment it looks like. So I'm not gonna be able to give you too much information on the pigments here, but it does have the information right with the palette so that if you are somebody who's interested in the pigments, you will have that information. But I am definitely interested in the light fast ratings, which obviously go hand in hand with pigments. So I'm really excited that it includes the information though, because I do find that important as somebody who I like to sell my artwork. I like to know what the light fastness is. And then it also talks about the brushes. There's an HB pencil, a flat 12, a round four, a round eight, an angled 10, and a fan six. So very exciting. Talks about color mixing, brush care. So there's a lot of information in this little pamphlet here. And then it also talks about some of their other products as well. There are some other 12 set from this series. So yeah, very, very exciting. I'm really happy with that. They do conform to the health and environment standards. Very, very cool. And I believe that these are 
Korean watercolors, which I think is really just really neat. I don't know that I've ever tried any Korean watercolors before, so I'm very excited. All right, that's a lot of yammering. Let's look at the palette itself. And then we'll take a look at the paper. How do I open this? I want to be... They have a nice protective film over it. Oh, this is a nice saw. I like that. And then it's got this so that you can hold on to it when you're out in the field. So this is nice and shiny. This is nice and matte. I really like this modern feel to this palette. I'm really excited because I just think it's such a unique design. Let me see if I can open it because I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. All right, so right off the bat, we're seeing we have our brushes here and a nice mixing space over here. I am really excited about that. And then the brushes fold out. How cool is this? Like everything you need. And it holds a pencil and it has a place for your brushes. And then it just folds out. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Like this is like, I feel like a child. And a nice little swatch card here. So I will be swatching these out. And the only thing is, I'm assuming it goes, this swatch goes like this. I shouldn't have turned it. But there are a couple, it looks like there's a couple extra pans in here. And that's really exciting too. But I don't think that there's room on the swatch card for those pans. So I'm not sure which colors these are. And they are not marked individually with the colors or pigment information, which I find to be really interesting. So I'm going to have to look in here. Yeah, this only has 24 colors in it as well. So it doesn't tell me what these two colors are. So I'll have to look on their website and see if I can figure that out. I love that there's two extra pans. I think that's great, but I feel like it would be nice if they were individually marked with their pigment information and their names and, of course, the light fastness. Um, I think that's strange because I know there are other... Let me see if I can... There's not a picture of it here, but I know there are other palettes online, at least, are advertised to have the typical paper wrapping that you see on most watercolors that have all the pigment information and everything like that right on it. I think that that would be beneficial if this palette did the same thing. So that is one thing that, while I'm really, really excited about the extra colors, I think that um, since this is supposed to be one of their professional watercolor sets and it also they talk about you know, about the light fastness and pigment information, I feel like it it's kind of an oversight to not have that included on the cards and, or at least have these ones be individually wrapped. And then you got to be careful because if that, yeah, I mean, so I will probably, after I swatch them, I'll probably write the information right on them, right on my swatch. So at least it is included in here, but it would be nice if it was included for these two extras as well. Okay, so that being said, let's actually look at the colors. And I am going to have to pause this at some point so that I can unwrap each of these because they are wrapped in plastic. They're just not wrapped with the paper that would say what they are. But again, most of the information is in here. But look at this. These are really pretty. Like, I'm really excited about this. I oh, I can't wait to play with these. So what we have for colors are lemon yellow, cadmium free orange, quinacridone rose, cobalt free blue, cobalt free turquoise, phthalo yellow green, cadmium free yellow, cadmium free red, quinacridone pink, ultramarine blue, turquoise, sap green, Yellow Ochre, Alizarin, Alizarin Crimson, Quinacridone Rubin Violet, Thalo Blue Sapphire, Emerald Green, Raw Umber, Raw Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Ultramarine Violet, Prussian Blue, Dark Thalo Green, and Deep Black. And then Mystery. <laughs> and Mystery. 
Oh, I'm so excited though. This is going to be a lot of fun. So yeah, I am going to start unwrapping these. I'm going to pause this and unwrap these and then I will start swatching and we'll take a look at what the colors will look like because I have a project in mind and I am going to work on this paper. It's going to be interesting to see if this swatch card is similar to their paper. Actually, let's take a look at their paper real quick. I'm going to gently push that down and we'll look at those brushes in a second as well. I'm excited about the new paper too because I'm always looking for different surfaces to try. Let's see. Oh, it's a, I think it's a block. And it has more of the information in here as well as, you know, just information about the company. So it looks like it is sealed on the top and the bottom, or on the on both the sides. I shouldn't say top and bottom. It, I'm going to be doing a piece that's in this format. So it is a block. That's really cool. Let me see. I'm not sure if you could see just the light texture cold press. So it's not perfectly smooth, but it's not too bumpy either. So it'll be interesting to see. And it does feel like a pretty good thickness. It is thicker than their swatch card and the texture does seem to be just a little bit different. So we'll see how it differs from the swatch card to here. But I have a project in mind that requires, it's going to be like a fall painting, I think, with an apple and some leaves. And so I don't know how many of my cool colors I'll be using. So it'll be good to swatch so I can get used to what they have for blues and stuff because I don't know that I'll be using that in my project. Let me see. I like the fact that it doesn't open too easily because I don't want stuff falling out, especially if we are going to be using this on the go. I will not be using it on the go today, but I'm really super excited to see how, how it works just in general because I like to go on vacations with my husband for our anniversary every summer and or usually when there's not a pandemic going on. And yeah, so I probably will be bringing this with me. The brushes are a compact size. They're not like a full length brush. They're a little bit smaller, so they fit in the palette really well, but that's perfect for when you're on the go. Nice and soft. We'll see how well they do when we work on our actual piece. And I do like the variety of brushes here. None of them are very big, but again, when you're on the go, if you're working in a small watercolor sketchbook or something like that, it's perfect. And then it also they also include a standard HB pencil, and it has the eraser at the end. And I like that it's one of the white erasers, so it shouldn't stain the paper. Very exciting. Pretty much everything you need but the water. I am, yeah, I'm really, really impressed with with the setup I think it's really neat I love that it's included I just think it's such a unique palette and of course we have our sponge here to wipe things off of all right so I am going to start unwrapping these and then I will be swatching I'll probably switch to time lapse while I'm swatching we'll see we'll see how it goes just because I have a project planned and it's probably going to take a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, this is taking forever, but it always does. Something I wanted to mention, these are not glued in. And if I tip, they do come loose and can fall out. And that happened because I wanted to test. They're definitely more snug when they're in their wrapper, obviously, because they've got an extra layer on them. But I am still unsure if I accidentally mixed up my Thalo Sapphire Blue with my Ultramarine Blue because I had them fall out and I had to figure out <laughs> where to put them back. I did a little bit of mark making with them, just a little bit with the corners to see. I think I've got it correct, but... That is something to keep in mind. It might be different once it's closed, obviously. They weren't falling out in travel. They weren't all mixed up when I opened it up. So I think once it is closed, you can put this over it and have that in between. And hopefully that will hold them in place. We'll test that after I'm done with my project. I don't dare to test it now. 
Um, but also this, I was thinking this can also be used as another little palette. So you got extra mixing space using this too when you're out and about. That's just kind of a, another thought. But yeah, I'm going to continue with this and then I will come back to swatch. And this is yet another reason why it would have been nice for each of these pans to be wrapped with their specific pigment information on them because some of the ones that fell out were still wrapped and I would have been able to put them back in place and there would have been less confusion because I would have had the information I needed to make sure I could put them back where they're supposed to go. Okay, so now that they're unwrapped, my first impressions they're beautiful. They actually kind of make me think of Derwent Ink Tense blocks. Like it's kind of like the same feeling. I like the fact that they were individually wrapped because they're nice and new and pristine. However, I do feel like if you're going to individually wrap them, first of all, it would be nice to have like the information on it as well, especially in the case of these two, but I already mentioned that. But I think that since they were individually wrapped, they couldn't glue them in here. And that might be an issue since this is a travel palette. I don't know if they're going to fall out in travels, like if it gets put upside down or anything like that. Because they definitely were more secure in there when they had their packaging on them. That being said, you could probably just dab a little bit of glue and glue them in there yourself if that's something that you're worried about. I'm not going to test that right now because I don't want to mix up my colors before I get the chance to actually swatch them and I'm still worried that these two are mixed up. I have no way of knowing. But also I do kind of wish like I love the look of this palette. I think it is so unique and beautiful but I do wish there was a way for them to be more secure. I wish that it could kind of find a balance between the traditional palette where you can clip the pans in and then they're going to stay put as opposed to these just kind of sitting loosely in the plastic. So I wish that they had come in like individual plastic pans that you could set into the palette similar to this. That being said, I think this is more beautiful than the way this looks with the metal and everything. Definitely aesthetically pleasing and unique. So time will tell and I will try and test that a little bit later, but I'm just kind of scared right now. I'm thinking that this will help prevent some of that. At least they shouldn't be able to move around past the brushes, but like, I don't know. I am still, I'm like really excited about this. I do love the way this looks. I'm just, oh, and I'm excited about the variety of color. I think that it's got a, a nice variety of color. So I'm very happy with that as well. All right, so let's start the swatches. That does not look ultramarine to me. That looks like that might be the ultramarine violet, but I don't remember the ultramarine violet falling out, so. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know, guys. I don't know. My swatch card may be way off. Okay. Now I think my ultramarine blue and my ultramarine violet got mixed up. Because that is definitely blue. <laughs> oh man, holy Hades. Oh lord. So this is a, a good example of why it's good to swatch your watercolors because they all look the same when they're dry. I'm just saying. So, okay, and that looks more like Thalo. I don't remember all of these falling out. I think all my stuff is mixed up. All right. Ultramarine blue, the ultramarine violet, according to this. Now, these swatches aren't going to be perfectly accurate. Definitely more purpley. I'm hoping that the Thalo and the Prussian didn't get mixed up. This is a crap show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> All right. Well, so I switched the ultramarine violet. I switched the ultramarine blue with the ultramarine violet because I think that that's actually what's going on here. 
because this is definitely purple and that's definitely more blue. Hopefully those are the only two that I had mixed up. So originally I had switched the paints back in the palette where they're supposed to go, but then I just switched them back again so that they can line up with my swatch card. <laughs> and then I just changed the names on the swatch card. That way there it's less confusing. I don't know. Fun stuff. I, I gotta tell you, I love the adventures I get myself into. Okay, so finally starting on the project. What an ordeal that was. I want to give my usual disclaimer that this is not going to be a lesson on how to paint leaves and an apple in watercolor. Inevitably, I will get a comment or two that's, you know, somebody being upset that the voiceover doesn't match up. This is a review. <laughs> In, in case the past, like, I don't know, 20 minutes didn't give you that hint. But anyway, <laughs> so let's get to it. The first thing that I want to talk about is the paper. So I'm looking at their website and I got more information about their paper. It says our 100% cotton cold press paper has exceptional quality and strength, allowing velvety smooth and even washes with amazing vibrant color. And I don't dispute that at all. It's definitely very velvety and I really have enjoyed working on this paper. It's acid-free watercolor paper made in the Netherlands, which is really interesting. On a traditional mold cider without added optical brighteners, it will not yellow or degrade over time and keep your artwork vibrant and bright. I tested this with my acid-free pen. Later on, you'll probably see off in the margin there, there'll be like a little purple line, and it did not change. So according to my little test with my acid-free pen, it is indeed acid-free paper. And then it says the cotton fibers are internally and externally sized. In parentheses, it says vegan. So it appears that there was no animal sizing used on this. So that's very good if you are somebody who is who is vegan and if that's important to you and it says to ensure the paper offers optimal absorbency and will not warp or bloat when heavy washes or multiple layers are applied and easily withstand other rougher techniques and artist tape i will do a tape test later on since this is on a block i didn't tape my edges i didn't really need to but you will see the tape test later on and it didn't warp too heavily. I mean, it worked really, really well since it was glued on two sides. I was very happy with that. There was there was some warping, obviously, but then it flattened when it dried on its own. And then it says, we care about artists. We selected the best sizes and easiest to remove two side bounding. So you can paint without needing to stretch your paper when traveling. It is very easy to remove your artwork too. And, you know, use a clean palette knife to remove it. I didn't really have much issue removing this later on. I didn't do that on camera. But one of the reasons why I centered my paper or my drawing or my painting, I should say, the way I did was so that I didn't have to worry about when I'm removing it, like the edges tearing or anything like that. So the other thing that I want to kind of get into here is the price of this paper. Out of the supplies that was sent, to me, this is probably the pricier endeavor. Now, of course, any prices that I mentioned in this video are subject to change. So if you're watching this a year from now or even a week from now, they may be different, especially the Amazon prices. Right now, the paper is on sale on their website. I have to say the paint, it's $40 for this set right now. Um, I think both on Amazon and on their website, that's not bad considering you're also getting brushes and a pencil and just the general setup of the palette itself. It's a very unique design. $40, not too bad, especially where the paint has the pigment information and the light fast information. So I'm pretty impressed with the price point for the paint itself. The paper is a little bit pricier. Right now, the original price of it is $35.95, which is what it's going for on Amazon. It is currently on sale on their website for $26.95. And I found that interesting because this is the 9 by 12 block. Their 12 by 16 is originally $45.95, but it's on sale for $18.95. So that means their 12 by 16 block is actually cheaper on sale at this moment than their... 9 by 12 is. So that's kind of interesting. And also for their 9 by 12, that puts it at about $1.35 per sheet at the sale price and $1.79 per sheet at their original price. So that's just something to keep in mind. I was looking at Arches. 
their pad of 12 sheets for a 9 by 12 now granted this pad obviously has 20 in it so you're getting more um is 1784 on Amazon right now which puts it about a dollar 48 per, per sheet which is less expensive than this paper when this paper is not on sale however their list price for arches is 32.05 making it $2.67 cents per sheet, which I have never paid list price for a pad of arches. I've never actually had to pay a list price on it. So that's just something to keep in mind. I just wanted to put that out there. They also offer some cheaper options in this paper and some fun formats, like some square formats, like in an eight by eight. And the company also has sketchbooks, but I don't know what kind of paper they use in their sketchbook. I don't know if it's this 100% watercolor paper or if it's just regular sketch paper. I can't really speak to that. That being said, I really, really love this paper. It's definitely a high quality paper. Now let's get into the paint because that's what we're really here for, right? I don't know. I, I, I love color. So we're going to get down to the paint. Now I love the variety of colors in this set. Um, they actually kind of have an odor to them, which I wanted to mention in the beginning, but it's such a slight odor and it honestly doesn't bother me that much. It literally reminds me of my childhood art classroom, like in elementary school. It brings me back to those days. Definitely a nostalgic smell for me. It's not overly powerful. I didn't really notice it as much working. I noticed it a little bit more while like I was unwrapping them and things like that. So I have a sensitivity to odors a lot of times and it didn't bother me at all. As far as working properties go, most colors lifted fairly easily, which was great for fixing mistakes and different effects. I really enjoyed the color payout and the vibrancy and I was able to get a lot of layers. However, I noticed there was a lot of opaque and semi-opaque colors in there. There's 17 of them that are either opaque or semi-opaque in this set. And then there's only like six of them that are completely transparent. And then there's a few others that are semi-transparent. So if you're somebody who really likes transparent watercolors, this may not be the set for you because there is a lot of opaque colors. I don't mind that because I really like a large color payout, but it really comes down to preference. They do say that they use all safe alternatives to you know, traditional colors. So there's no cadmium or anything like that. These are safe to be used by children and by teens and around pets and things like that because they're not, they don't have the cadmium, they don't have cobalt, they don't have any of the actual ingredients that make them awful <laughs> or awfully poisonous, I should say. So I wanted to put that out there as well. Uh, they're very vibrant and they layer really, really well. I think they are going to make a great paint for mixed media. As you could tell, I used some colored pencil mainly to get the dots on the apple and to use as veining or to use as a resist for the veins of the leaves. And that worked really, really well as well. Also, I came over on top for the highest highlight of the apple using a Karen Dosh Neo Color 1 crayon. That's not on video. I did that kind of a spur of the moment thing. And that worked really well as well. It has such a smooth velvety, not, I don't know, finish to it that it's going to be perfect for mixed media. I also signed my name using a Faber Castell pit pen so I could try that on top of it. That worked really well as well. So if you're more into illustration, I like to use my, do my line art after the piece. And so it went right on top perfectly to do my signature. So I don't think there'd be any issues using line art. I'm very happy with the variety of color, as I mentioned before, and they're just, they're very vibrant. I'm excited about the light fast ratings, but I also don't know how they do their light fast testing. And again, I'm not somebody who's overly familiar with pigments myself. I'm surprised that some of them were such, like some of the reds were as light fast as they are, but that's as somebody who weeds out colored pencils going according to light fast ratings. And so I know a lot of reds tend to be fugitive. There's nothing in this set that is supposed to be fugitive. They're all supposed to be between very good and excellent light fastness. But again, I don't know how they do their light fast testing and I couldn't find that information online. Something else to note, I never did find out what those two extra pans were. And also these do not appear to be available open stock, which is a shame because if you use up a lot of one color and you want to replace it, then you'd have to buy a whole new set. And really nobody wants to do that, honestly. Um, so I think that it's really a shame that they don't offer 
they don't even offer like tubes available open stock so you can refill them. However, this palette is pretty sturdy. So if you want to refill it with other watercolors that you'd like, you could always do that. So let's talk a little bit about the brushes. I was very happy with the variety of them. I used the small round brushes the most, but I did get the chance to use each of them at least a little bit. I used one of the flat ones, obviously, for to do my swatching. And I brought in the fan brush to do some of the texture on the apple. I was all in all very happy with the brushes. Are they the best brushes out there? Not necessarily. They don't hold a ton of water, but I think part of that is the fact that they have to be compact so that they can kind of fit in there. So the bristles, I don't know. They're just, they're not as thick as they could be, but and I also don't know if the brushes are vegan friendly. They do have a set of vegan friendly brushes on their website, which are the tulip brushes that I have already. And they state that they're vegan friendly, whereas these brushes, it doesn't state anything on this set about it being vegan friendly. And I feel like it would say so if that was the case. So I just wanted to throw that out there. They're perfectly good brushes. They held up pretty well. I'm a little rough with my brushes. So one of the thinner ones that I use the most started to fray a little bit, but I didn't really notice any bristles falling out or anything like that. And all in all, I really enjoyed it. And the fact that everything is right where it needs to be, this is very compact in the fact that it all fits in the palette. It's a little bit long when you open up the palette, but I'm not upset about that because I really enjoyed the amount of mixing space. So it's compact in the fact that you have everything you need, though it can take up a little bit of space on your table lengthwise. So just keep that in mind as well. I have to say, though, this is the perfect palette for a teen. I, when I was asked if I wanted to review some of their products, I got to pick out what I wanted and I went with what young Shanna would have wanted. This would be a perfect gift item for somebody who is just, you know, getting into art or whatever. Like it would just be such a great gift because it has pretty much everything you need. Okay, she's all finished. Okay, so for some final thoughts on these paints and this paper. First, let's start with the paper. Definitely sturdy. As you can see, I've cut the borders off. And it did not go through at all except for once. And I really think it was just one spot that I had poked really hard with a colored pencil <laughs> while it was wet so that I could get those little white dots. And so honestly, that's pretty darn good because this paper took a beating. I really, really enjoyed working on this paper. And I'll show you a little dot went through from that spot, but really not bad. And I still have a lot more paper. I think that it's great. And I was really, really impressed. But one thing I didn't get the chance to do, because it's a block, I didn't need to use tape. So I didn't really get the chance to do a tape test. However, I kept a strip of the paper after I cut it and I put my tape down. It's my regular artist tape that I usually use. And then I paint it over it. So let's peel it and see. Now the trick is you want to peel it. Usually you peel it away from the paint area. So let's see. I really, really like wet it down really hard. So that's one reason why it's kind of seeping through. But my main concern is with the paper and if it is going to tear. So it's always good to kind of pull it up and away from your surface very gently, kind of diagonally. And it did not tear. Now, is that to say that it wouldn't in the future? I can't, I, I don't know. I can't see the future. I'm not a fortune teller. But I can say that I'm pretty impressed with that. Very, very happy with this paper. Now, I don't know what their other paper is like, so I don't know. I can't speak to that, but I can say that I really, really enjoyed this particular paper. Their 100% cotton paper. Definitely have nothing bad to say about it. Now, I'm somebody who usually works on hot press, and so... I can get finer details, generally speaking, on something that is really, really smooth. That being said, this didn't have such a bad texture that I wasn't able to get detail, but it was just enough to soak up that watercolor and it makes some really pretty textures. However, there was a little bit around the edges. You know, obviously, I'm not getting the crisp edges I would if I was working 
even on a hot press watercolor paper. That's to be expected. That's nothing wrong with this paper in general, just kind of how it goes with cold press versus hot press. But yeah, okay, so let's talk about the palette. I'm doing it, folks. Let's see if they get mixed up. I have my brushes down. I have my little, uh, that plastic piece in there still dividing it. And um, my color swatches in there, kind of preventing things. Let's see if those moved around. They're still in place. So you definitely can travel these, especially since they are not moving now that I've used a lot of water on them. They're not coming out as easily because once they got wet, they got a little bit sticky and now they're really stuck in place. So that little issue in the beginning is really a non-issue. And with that being said, I really, really like this palette. There was a lot of mixing space. I was really impressed with that, especially with this, which I keep in there as a way to kind of keep those in place. I keep it upside down so my swatches don't get dirty on it and I just put my swatches face down so that my wet brushes don't mess with my swatches. I will probably um, cover this at some point but I have not done that yet clearly. It's still just the paper but yeah you can see the colors I used the most and I really enjoyed them. I enjoyed working with them. I used a lot of the raw umber. <laughs> I definitely used a lot of the quinacridone Reuben Violet. I didn't use as much of the Alizarin Crimson because it's not as light fast. So I kind of stuck to the ones that I knew would be the most light fast. But I obviously dipped into some others as well just to see how they worked. And I was really impressed overall. Are they the highest quality out there? I mean, obviously they're not going to be up there with Daniel Smith or M. Graham or even Holbein or any of those. But for the price that you pay, Definitely impressed. Overall, really enjoyed my experience with them. They dried nice and matte, as you can see here. Not, no weird shimmery, but they're not drying necessarily chalky. I have to say, they didn't dry too chalky or anything like that. Not like, you know, little kid paints that you would get or anything like that. So it doesn't seem like there's an overabundance of filler in them. So I was very impressed with the color payout. Very happy. And I'm really impressed for the price point definitely impressed for the price point. I think that this is a great set for beginners, a great set for people who are just starting to get serious about art. But even for those of us who have been doing art our whole lives and want to have like just a really neat gift item, but you know, something that is relatively inexpensive but can give professional results this is definitely up there i'm very very impressed i love the design i'm really excited that now that these are have been used they're like really in there i mean this one can still come out but i really i think that if i were to spray the bottom of this and just set it back in there it would stay and so i'm really happy with that again Wish that I knew what these colors were. That would be very helpful, but appreciate the fact that there's extras in there. So yeah, what do you think? Would you try this palette? And yeah, let me know what you think of my finished piece. Thank you, Zen Art, for allowing me to try this palette. Oh yeah, one thing I wanted to mention about the brushes, and I mentioned a lot of this in my voiceover, but this is just a recap. They held up pretty well. Um, you can see that there is a little bit of fraying now but really not too bad and the fact that these were included in this set is really a game changer in the fact that right now as many of you know i am working on my studio so i have been working down in my living room it has been so convenient to have everything i need in one set all i needed was the water and I gotta say, my husband was probably pretty happy about it as well, because when I'm working on a project, usually my brushes are laying around everywhere, but this time that was not the case, because I just put them back in here, and they just stay together. So I don't have a bunch of supplies just laying around, and it's just so convenient. So if you, even if you're not out on the go, but you have a small home studio, and you don't have a lot of space, and you're tired of having to pick up everything and put it away, whatever, this is so compact, and everything is right where you need it, and so... I just, I'm really impressed with this concept. I love the fact that I had what I needed. The brushes, I mean, they don't hold the most water out of, you know, regular watercolor brushes, but they did the job. They did what I needed, and they're definitely passable 
when you're in a pinch or when you want to be out on the go or like I said if you're like me and you are working in a limited space I don't know it just all worked really really well together and I'm super impressed okay so thank you so much for watching I will see you next week you have a great day bye if you found value in this video please feel free to hit the like button hit subscribe and share so others can see it as well thank you